咁我哋就開會啦，好嘛？ Members, we have formed a quorum. May I call the meeting to order? Please invite the administration to join us. First, we have to confirm the minutes of our meeting dated the 20. I mean, uh, the um, 21st of February. No, uh, the 25th of October. Uh, we've got a letter from Madam Chang in hand. Uh, her commitments are. Brother, uh, she she's rather overburdened, and uh, very often she cannot make it to our meetings. So she has written to resign from the bills committee with immediate effect. Members, do do we have any objection? All right, then we accept Miss Chen Yin Han's resignation. Now we will continue with the clause by clause scrutiny of the bill. The administration has prepared responses to comments received in the past, and uh, we've all got that paper. A two nine one four one five bracket oh one. When we uh, deal with new section eighty eight a, we may also touch on uh, this, and I believe the administration uh, will. Respond to these comments later. Let us welcome the Deputy Secretary and also his team. Uh, for, forgive me for uh, sparing the formal introduction. We were at 88A, Section New section 88A is paper C is page C3046 of our blue bill. Ms. Chong, over to you. Thank you. Yes, we are now uh, at section 88B. Limitations on liability of service providers. Now we are talking about internet service providers, ISPs. If uh, they satisfy the following conditions, then they will only be liable to a certain extent on matters of infringement under 88B 2A. If the service provider has taken a uh, reasonable, or rather, a if the service provider has taken reasonable steps to limit or stop the infringement as soon as practical under the provided, received a notice of alleged infringement, or became aware that infringement has occurred, or became aware of facts or circumstances that would lead inevitably to the conclusion that infringement has occurred, and that these service provider must not receive any direct financial benefit attributable to the infringement and C, the uh, service provider uh, will not interfere with standard technical measures that are used by copyrights to identify or protect their copyright works. And D, if uh, the service provider has designated an agent to receive notices of alleged infringements, by supplying through the provider's service, including on the provider's website, or in a location accessible to the public, and the agent's name and contact uh, details. Well, uh, under one, uh, the uh, service provider will not be liable for damage or any other pecuniary remedy for infringement of the copyright. And three, if the service provider has taken reasonable steps to limit or stop the infringement in question, and uh, if uh, it has uh, complied with all the provisions of the code of practice, then it can it can be deemed to have taken all reasonable steps. Four, uh, in determining whether a service provider has received 
or is receiving any financial benefit, then a number of factors have to be uh, taken into account. Uh, first, uh, whether the service provider is receiving uh, any uh, charging for internet service as higher than uh, its counterparts, and B, whether the fee of, intern of online service is really related to the infringing act, and three, the financial benefits obtained by the provider for providing the online service to which the infringement relates uh, is greater than the benefit that would usually result from charging for the online service in accordance with accepted industry practices. And if it is just a one-off set of fee or flat periodic payments, then the financial benefits would not uh, be regarded as uh, being directly uh, attributable to the infringement. And five, the service provider doesn't have to investigate actively into facts or any alleged infringement. All he has to do is to uh, inform the user and uh, to uh, delete the uh, infringement uh, materials. Mr. Ma Fung Kwok, I have a question on subsection 2.1. Uh, the uh, provider um, uh, has uh, to receive a notice of alleged infringement. And what is meant by a notice of alleged infringement has to be it has to be in writing, or can it be a, a, a verbally delivered or by email? Uh, there are provisions on this, and we'll deal with it later. Yes, uh, the following provisions are relevant. All right, other colleagues. If uh, there are no further questions, we go on, please. Yes, uh, this is uh, directly relevant to Mr. Ma's question. Under Section 88C, we have a notice of alleged infringement. If it is alleged that an infringement of the copyright in a work has occurred or is occurring on a service provider's service platform, a notice may be given to the provider. It has to be in writing. Uh, this uh, section sets out the particulars required. In our code of practice, we are going to uh, provide templates for the complainant to provide the necessary information. Uh, usually, uh, we uh, talk about significant information, uh, such as uh, the author, uh, the name, and uh, where uh, has the um, infringement taken place. And the complainant has to state whether uh, he is uh, the owner of the copyright or an authorized representative. Subsection 3. And the notice of alleged infringement must contain the complainant's name and address for service in Hong Kong uh, for contact. And. The notice uh, must substantially identify the copyright that is alleged to have been uh, infringed. And it must contain uh, the material, the link of reference to the material. And under E, the notice must contain a description of how the material or activity mentioned infringes the right of the copyright owner. And F, uh, there must be a statement to the effect that the complainant believes in good faith that the use of the material is an infringement. And uh, then uh, there must be a statement to require the uh, service provider to inform the uh, user. And if the material uh, is on the website, uh, it has to be deleted. And then, subsection 4, if 
a notice of alleged infringement does not comply with the uh, forgotten provisions, then it is not a valid notice, and the service provider uh, can choose uh, not to pay any notice to that note to that notice, and then the mode of delivery. A question asked by Mr. Ma. Uh, it can also be served uh, by electronic means. Any questions, please? Uh, here it says, uh, which may include electronic means. Can it be as simple as an email containing all the information required in these provisions? Ms. Zhang. We will provide very detailed guidelines in the code of practice. It will require all service providers to provide templates designated to facilitate complainants to use the templates to fill in all the required information. And uh, the um, service provider may also specify an electronic means. But of course, uh, the notice can also be sent by email. Uh, the point is to facilitate the service provider to uh, deal with that complaint. I'd like to know whether the code of practice uh, has specified the format of the notice. That's correct. Mr. Chen Ti Chun. Hola. Hi, Gong. 88C bracket 1. It says that there is infringement and um, <clears throat> that an infringement of a copyright has occurred or is occurring. Now, I would like to know what are the legal liabilities there in. Well, the user will have to be informed in answer to your question, even though the item is no longer in existence, but the copyright owner had alleged that there had been certain infringement of the rights, and therefore the user will have to be informed so that there is the education uh, objective that is achieved. That is to say, the uh, what had been done had been discovered and there is rectification. Now, uh, how long does it have to be for there to be an infringement? For example, how long has it been on a certain website? Well, it, there is no specification as to the time, but if the, the it has been discovered to have occurred, then there can be a complaint uh, made. There is flexibility in the law, and that is there is no time of uh, infringement specified. Now, for infringement of copyright that has occurred, uh, what is the liability and responsibility? Will the copyright owner be um, informed? Well, actually, if the infringement is no longer in existence, then uh, there's nothing to delete. But on the other hand, there will have to be a safe harbor and that is when the alleged uh, allegement of uh, copyright infringement had been received, then there should be uh, an action to inform the user. Now, I would like to know whether, let's say, for instance, that there had been a, a notification of infringement. Will that period be taken out from the consideration? No. Actually, if there is a complaint, then there will be a deletion at that point in time. We carry on. 88D concerning the notice given by service provider. We have talked about the copyright owner and the issuance of a notification of infringement. And this is about the service provider in 88D becoming aware that an infringement in the work has occurred on the provider service platform. And the user will be informed in this circumstance. And and if the user had on that particular platform uh, linked uh, to the infringed 
um, work, then the infringed work cannot be used, and there should be a notification to that effect given by the service provider. That's 88D, 88E counter notice. This is from the user's point of view, and that is after receiving a copy of notice of alleged infringement sent by the service provider, then the and the material is deleted. Then during a, uh, there will be a period of time in which there can be an objection made and. Um, or disputing or denying the infringement alleged by the complainant or service provider and requesting provider to take reasonable steps to reinstate the material or seize disabling access to the material within the reasonable time. <clears throat> eighty eight e we go on to we should it should be eighty eight f excuse me eighty eight f concerning making of false statements we have received from the users and other persons certain concerns concerning the mechanism whether it would be re uh, abused and we have therefore put in the following and that is for offense making false statements a person commits an offense if the person makes any statement in a notice of alleged infringement that the person knows to be false in a material respect or recklessly make any statement of alleged infringement that is false in the material respect, then the person who commits an offence under subsection 1 is liable on conviction to fine at level 2 and to imprisonment for two years. This is to forestall any abuse of the mechanism. Questions, members? None. 88G. Civil liability for making false statements on top of the criminal uh, liability that we have talked about. Any person who makes any statement in a notice of alleged infringement that the person knows to be false or does not believe to be true in a material respect is liable in damages to any person who suffers loss or damage as a result of the making of the statement. And the loss or damage in relation to the statement that is actual and reasonably foreseeable as likely to result from the making of the uh, statement. Mr. Chen Chi Chen. Uh, concerning the criminal liability, will the government look into these notices or will they make uh, will the government make spot checks or will they check through all the notices? Well, for criminal offences, it would be the customs uh, department which would have received the complaints uh, alleging that there's a false statement and reporting the same to the customs department, which will then uh, carry out investigations to see whether that is validated. Or perhaps in spot inf inspections, uh, they have found the same kind of uh, infringement. They can also take similar actions. Uh, will this be in cycles, that is, inspections in cycles? Or no, it is not enshrined in the law because there may be a number large number of these if the enforcement department are using resources to actually uh, proactively investigate and look for such cases it may not be best use of resources but rather they should rely on complaints and reports of such cases of infringement uh, Now, Kai now for false representation uh, it is also an, inf an offense. I would like to know whether this is similar uh, in terms of uh, liability as in 88F. Yes, they are indeed similar. Now, for the provider, how long will the materials have to be retained? Now, if I remember correctly, the code of practice uh, specifies 18 months. Now, this is not in the law, the body of the law itself, but rather in the code of practice that uh, 18 months is the retention time. Now, for 
notices which have been forwarded, can they be retracted or amended? Well, amended, yes. Well, it amounts to retraction, actually. Now, if I find that I have made a wrongful uh, complaint or there's material information that is incorrect, then yes, I can make amendments accordingly. If there are no other questions, we continue. 88H. Exemption of uh, service providers from liability for removal of material. The main point is to protect the service provider as long as he, in good faith, um, has removed any material or disabled access to the material person to a notice of alleged infringement provider is not liable to any person for any claim made in respect of the removal or disabling whether or not the relevant material activity is ultimately determined to be infringing. Now for section 2, it goes into detail concerning the uh, situation where it does not apply to material residing at the direction of a subscriber of the service provider on the on the service platform and that is removed or the two material activity residing at the direction of a subscriber of the provider on the provider's service platform and to which access is disabled and in this case there will not be any legal liabilities <clears throat> we carry on 88i, evidence of compliance with conditions. And this is with relation to the liability of service providers if they have shown evidence tending to sh uh, show that the provider has complied with 88b, <coughs> That is the conditions described in Section 88B or the Code of Practice. Unless there is evidence to the contrary, otherwise a court must presume that the provider has complied with that condition. We carry on. 88J, the Code of Practice itself. The code of practice is uh, <clears throat> uh, published in the Gazette as a code of practice by the Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development for providing practical guidance to service providers in respect of this division. And without limiting subsection 1, the Secretary may in the code of practice specify the procedures for giving a notice of alleged infringement or counter notice, including forms and information to be contained in the notice, the manner of sending the notice, and the manner of verification of statements in the notice, and the cause of action that a service provider may adopt on receiving a notice of alleged infringement or counter notice. So that's in the code of practice. In bracket 3 there, in any proceedings, if the court is satisfied that a provision of the code of practice is relevant to determining a matter that is in issue in the proceedings, then the code of practice is admissible in evidence in the proceedings and prove that a person in B there, proof that a person contravened or did not contravene the provision may be relied on as tending to establish or negate that matter. Mr. Mock. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Concerning Section 88, concerning the safe harboring, actually, for users and the industry, and in particular the operators in the past years, had always wanted this section to be introduced and adopted as soon as possible because it has a significant impact on whether they will or will not operate in Hong Kong. A number of overseas countries already provide such safe harboring. And uh, it had been pointed out whether the safe guards or protection is sufficient and we see from the uh, subsections here and specifications here that it had been these protections have been put in. I just want to put this on record and that is this is 
in the main welcome, and it is a good thing. Now, when we talk about the code of practice, I have a question. Does the code of practice, is there a draft that has been provided to us, the code of practice? Yes, it's been provided to us already. Uh, the number is 829-1415. Uh, one five one one four one five zero two, starting eight to nine. Yes, for the code of practice, the content of it. Well, the secretary will decide on the content. Is that it, or where there are any amendments? Will there be a process for consultation? And there are three areas, copyright owner, the service provider, internet, and also the users for these three parties. Will there be specific procedures? Well, concerning the code of practice and safe harboring, and uh, where we have received opinions, and also Mr. Mock's point about uh, inquiries, as Mr. Chairman had pointed out in the document as specified by the chairman, there are already uh, certain uh, responses. And in March of 2012, which is the latest version, we have had already two sessions or rounds of consultation. Which year are you talking about? 2012, March of 2012. We have had two rounds of consultation. And therefore, the content of the Code of Practice is already in version 3. Now, you asked, uh, Mr. Mock asked whether there will be consultation before there's any amendments. Yes, there will be stakeholders' consultation. Well, Mr. Chair, my feeling and my suggestion is that there may not be a lot of new opinions, but on the other hand, the Internet had really changed quite significantly since 2012, in particular for some of the participants uh, who are active now were not participating in 2012, and they, have, they may have new opinions, even though we may not need another big round of uh, involved consultation, but I think it would be good to inform them of uh, the status as well, because it's been a couple of years and the market had changed quite a bit. And there will be new um, opinions and uh, it would be good to let the participants know that this is the status and this is the protection that will be afforded them and also this will be good in keeping a an open communication channel with them because they may not know what the status is now for us. Deputy Secretary, yes, we will uh, keep in uh, contact with the industry. All right. So we have completed the new uh, sections. Please go on. 89, and that is uh, clause 51, uh, section 81, a right to be identified as author or director. Now, uh, we have corresponding, uh, this, this, these are corresponding amendments uh, that has uh, to repeal. Um, broadcast or included in a cable program service that is section 89.2a and section 89.2 uh, we repeal paragraph, paragraph B that is about film and sound recording and then section 83a to repeal broadcast or included in a cable program service to, and stop substitute it with as communicated to the public. Uh, this is as a result of the introduction of broadcasting right and um, subsection 3a to uh, repeal broadcast or included in a cable program service and are uh, substituted by or communicated to the public and other amendment is relation to section 893 
to repeal paragraph B and substitute with a sound recording of the work is made available to the public, or copies of such a sound recording are issued to the public. And the other amendment uh, is uh, section 89.3 to repeal paragraph C, and the amendment is similar to the uh, amendment to a previous clause. And we substitute paragraph C with a film of which the soundtrack includes the work is shown in public or made available to the public or copies of such a film are issued to the public. And then section 89.4a, b, and c, uh, the amendments are similar. That is um, in view of uh, the introduction of broadcasting right and to repeal broadcasts are included in a cable program service and substitute it with communicated to the public and um, and copies of a graphic work uh, representing it or a photograph of it are uh, issued or made available to the public uh, is repealed. Mr. Christopher Chong, uh, may I seek a clarification? So, uh, for broadcasting or entertainment programs uh, that are broadcast uh, through um, a cable program service, but when you say communicated to the public, what is meant by communicated to the public? Uh, what about internal training of a company or an organization? seminars that are open to the public or people may attend by invitation, workshops, uh, luncheon meetings and talks. If uh, such um, works are shown after this amendment, uh, would they be caught? Ms. Chong, when we uh, discussed uh, Section 28, we said that communicated to the public uh, is uh, by means of electronic means. Uh, Mr. Christopher Jong asked about uh, showing it at uh, on different occasions. Now we do have a definition for public. It doesn't include a social circle that you're familiar with or um, within a family. And the um, uh, size of the audience uh, cannot uh, be um, uh, cannot uh, be um, expected or uh, estimated beforehand. So, by communicated to the public, that means uh, uh, it is open to members of the public. They are not uh, your friends or re relations. What about? Uh, an academic lecture or seminar in the university. People attending are not people I know, and they may not be within my social circle. And the purpose is for academic reasons. No, no, not necessarily. Well, what if uh, they invite um, Clinton to give a talk and uh, he is there for money? You have uh, to make a distinction between a face-to-face -face, um, uh, contact and uh, shown by electronic means. Well, even uh, the media would use uh, the media to assist. So the speaker uh, may show a video uh, to assist his presentation. Would that be infringement? Well, it depends on uh, whether the material used uh, has copyright protection or exemption. If it is uh, protected and if it has gone beyond uh, the um, exemptions available in the bill, of course, it is an infringement. As regards uh, the mode, whether it is uh, by electronic means or we we'll talk about uh, communic um, transmitted through the Internet and not uh, in the way you mentioned. If it is a talk in a university, then uh, it is not really a means of electronic transmission. 
how how can you say it isn't? Because uh, people can have a hyper links, and, and when uh, you when somebody delivers a PowerPoint presentation, there may be an hyperlink to a short video clip. And and uh, works may be played there, so it has to be delivered um, by electronic means, even by a public network. But but uh, that is not the uh, electronic um, communications right referred to in the bill. This is just playing or showing to the public. Uh, there is an exclusive right under uh, the copyright regime. But is it problematic or not? I'd like to know whether people will be caught by uh, Section 89 as a result. If I uh, organize such an event or a talk, people have to pay to attend, and uh, if uh, some copyright works are played, would that be a problem? Well, 89 is about uh, the um, uh, the uh, right, the spiritual right, the right in spirit. If uh, there is no acknowledgement to the author, then uh, you may uh, infringe uh, the um, the right of uh, the author. Sometimes when we uh, give a talk, uh, we may uh, use some uh, copyright works for demonstration or for comparison. So long as we give acknowledgement to the author, is that okay? Whether you have infringed other copy uh, right, uh, it will be subject to other provisions. But in spirit, uh, you have acknowledged the author. You said that uh, when. Um, Artistic works are shown, then there may be an infringement. Uh, sometimes you may uh, showcase an exhibition and uh, public uh, public place or a private uh, premises uh, with uh, artworks. And uh, if uh, there is no acknowledgement as to the source of uh, the works, will that be an infringement? Thank you. You have to consider whether there are exemption provisions. Under Section 40, there are incidental uh, exemptions. Mr. Chong, I think. We uh, did um, deliberate uh, in great detail uh, the uh, cases you just mentioned. What about this? Uh, we we have uh, already uh, discussed this in detail, Mr. Chen Chi Chun. Oh, what do you mean by uh, identifying the uh, author? That means even if we have already obtained copyright or right to use it, if you have not identified the author, then uh, you have infringed his right, infringed upon his right. Well, you have to acknowledge, uh, say, the name or the author or the director of uh, the film. When you know it, you have to identify it. This is about uh, the author's right to be identified as the uh, author or director of the work. Uh, I like to know uh, whether the step has to be taken first. Well, uh, 89 there is a um, spiritual right of the author. In the exemption provisions, uh, there may be a requirement on identification, or if there is no exemption, then you must respect the uh, spiritual right of the author when you use a certain uh, work, you have to identify uh, the source and also the name of the, uh, you have to identify the author. I think we have uh, discussed this more than once. Please go on. Section 91. We have exemptions. Uh, we have deleted A and replaced it with 
Section 39, Criticism, Review, Quotation and Reporting and Commenting on Current Events. And uh, also new A, B, uh, para 30, I mean section 39A, parody, satire, caricature, and uh, pistache. Under some circumstances, uh, it may not be easy to identify uh, the author or the source, so exemption can be granted with regard to uh, the spiritual right of the author. Uh, parody. If I uh, do it again, replay it, is that a form of parody? Now, uh, for instance, there is a drama and I um, play it again. Can the uh, author uh, say that uh, exemption can be granted. Uh, how can we protect the right of the author? Where well, under section 39 or clause 39, and when we deal with uh, exemptions, uh, we have covered three, uh, ma four major areas: parody, satire, caricature, and pistache. Of course. Uh, Number of conditions have to be complied with. You cannot just uh, copy it word by word once and call it parody. We we'll talk about the um, the mode and also the format. Of course, certain conditions have to be complied with. Uh, for terms. In this bill, I think we have covered them previously already. Members may choose to uh, revisit our uh, papers already covered, or uh, the uh, officials can just um, respond very briefly. Okay. Section 50, clause 53, to amend section 92. Repeal. 92 bracket 3 bracket A broadcast or includes in the cable program service and substitute or communicates to the public. 92 bracket 3 repeal paragraph bracket B and substitute makes available to the public a film or sound recording of including a derogatory treatment of the work or issues copies of such a film or sound recording to the public. Section 92, bracket 4, bracket A, repeal or broadcasts or includes in the cable program service and substitute that with or communicates to the public. 92, 4B, repeal or issues or makes available to the public copies of such a film and substitute with makes such a film available to the public or issues copies of such a film to the public. 924 c repeal issues or makes available to the public copies of a graphic work representing or of a photograph of a derogatory treatment of the work substitute makes available to the public a graphic work representing or a photograph of a derogatory Treatment of the work or issues copies of such a graphic work or photograph in the public and section 92, 6A and B repeal the broadcast of includes in a cable program service and substitute with all communicates with the public 92, 6B repeal all makes available. Any questions? No? Chen Chi Chen. The derogatory treatment of a work. Will it conflict with a parody, satire, caricature, and pastiche? Well, we look at it from two angles. If the exemption is due to the work being a parody, satire, etc., then there will be, there can be exemption. But for derogatory um, treatment that is separate, where the copyright owner can prove that the work had been treated derogatorily, then it will 
open the case to examination as to whether there is an ex the exemption for parody, etc., would apply, or if the treatment in a derogatory way of the work of the copyright user, then the latter can resort to civil claims. But on the other hand, it is very difficult. It is not easy to have a to prove a work that is of derog uh, derogatory uh, given derogatory treatment. We do not have any precedent so far in Hong Kong, Mr. Chairman. So that is par uh, parodies, etc., are exempted, but not derogatory treatment of the work. Is that right? Well, Mr. Chairman, yes, the copyright owner will have to prove that there had been derogatory treatment. The hurdle is high for uh, proof. Uh, not only will the copyright use, uh, owner will have to claim that the person feels that he uh, that there is derogatory treatment, but rather the uh, th a third party or the public will have to satisfy that the name or the um, copyright user's uh, uh, name had been treated or had suffered because of the derogatory treatment of his work. 96. Section 96 to a repeal or makes available and 963A repeal broadcast it or includes it in a cable program service and substitute it with or communicate it to the public. 963B repeal broadcast it or includes it in a cable program service and substitute it with or communicates it to the public. And this is in keeping with what we have talked about earlier. That is, the uh, wording reflect the amendments that we have discussed earlier. They are similar. 108. Concerning provisions over damages in infringement action. Section 1082B, repeal the word and. Section 1082C repeal the word records and substitute uh, records. 1082C uh, and D, bracket D, any unreasonable conduct of the defendant after the act constituting the infringement occurred, including any act done or attempt made by the defendant to destroy, conceal, or disguise evidence of the infringement after having been informed of the infringement by the plaintiff. And E, the likelihood of widespread circulation of infringing copies as a result of the infringement. So these are the two uh, additions in the lawsuit concerning infringements and where there are damages to be awarded, these two will be taken into account in those cases. No other questions, uh, members? We follow on to section 116 concerning presumptions relevant to sound recordings, films, and computer programs. The amendment here is in <clears throat> uh, an addition of 2AA after section 118 bracket 2. I'm sorry, I misread. Sorry, that is section 1165 repeal broadcast or included in a cable program service wherever appearing. That is where all such wording appear and substitute such wording with or communicate it to the public. So these are similar amendments. That's right. Similar amendments reflected in the wording. Section 118 concerning offenses in relation to making or dealing with infringing articles, etc. This is a criminal offense. 118 bracket 2 
up to that section, add a new two capital A, capital A for the purposes of subsection bracket one bracket G in determining whether any distribution of an infringing copy of the work is made to such an extent as to affect uh, prejudicially the copyright owner. The court A may take into account all the circumstances of the case and B in particular may take into account whether economic prejudice is caused to the copy copyright owner as a consequence of the distribution having regard to whether the infringing copy so distributed amounts to a substitution for the work. And in section 1182E, repeal the words recording by the Hong Kong Film Archive and substitute those words with recording by a designated library, museum, or archive. Section 1182E bracket A, repeal the Hong Kong Film Archive, archive wording and substitute with the library, museum, or archive. So these are the exemptions. Uh, that is, we're putting in library, museums, and archives as well. 1182EB, 2F, 2FA, similarly, repealing the Hong Kong Film Archive and substituting with the library, museum, or archive, therefore extending the protection to these institutes. Um, after section 1182F, add 2FA. In subsections 2E and 2F, also refer to designated library, museum, or archive. R2, a library, museum, or archive owned by the government, or a library, museum, or archive designated by the Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development under subsection 2FB. So this is mainly about specified libraries, how they can qualify for exemption. 118 bracket 9, before that section, add to uh, 8B, a person commits an offense if the person infringes copyright in a work by a, this is a um, criminal offense, A, communicating the work to, to the public for the purpose of or in the course of any trade or business that consists of communication, communicating works to the public for profit or reward, or communicating, B, communicating the work to the public, otherwise then for the purpose of or in the course of any trade or business that consists of communicating works to the public for profit or reward to such an extent as to affect prejudicially the copyright owner. And these would constitute an offense under the uh, infringement of copyright. 8C, for the purposes of subsection 8, capital B, bracket small b, in determining whether any communication of the work to the public is made to such an extent as to affect prejudicially the copyright owner, the court a may take into account all the circumstances of the case and B in particular may take into account whether economic prejudice is caused to the copyright owner as a consequence of the communication having regard to whether the communication amounts to a substitution for the work. 8D, it is a defense for the person charged with an offense under subsection 8B to prove that the person did not know and had no reason to believe that by communicating the work in question in the circumstances described in subsection 8B, A or B, the person was infringing the copyright in the work. Mr. Sin Chong Kai. Mr. Chairman, I hope I am correct in pointing this out. Is it true that certain TV stations or operating companies for television broadcast had uh, uh, raised opinions concerning this section. Uh, please be specific. Please be more clear, uh, Mr. Sin. Are we talking, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, are we talking about 8B? Are you we now on section 1188B? That is, on, we are at... Uh, Page 0073, is that not so? Yes. Well, the present drafting, I would like to know whether there is a 
TV broadcasting station operating in Hong Kong had written in to say that the exemption now is too broad and there should be amendments. Is this a relevant section, Mr. Chong? Now, Mr. Chairman, if I'm correct, they are talking about 28 capital A. 28 capital A, that is in the early stage concerning the definition of public broadcast. They had their opinions raised there. Mr. Chairman, I know of 28A. Uh, concerning the TV station's opinions after the conclusion of the of all the clauses, we will go back to their opinions to seek your views, members. Mr. Chen Chi Chen. Mr. Chairman, this is 118, which is a criminal offence. Of course, we are very concerned about that. But what is of most concern for the netizens would be section 118, whether 161, dishonest use of computer, be used in conjunction. Mr. Lai, the secretary, had said whichever is the easier uh, for prosecution will be used. Well, we have talked a lot about exemptions, but when we talk about dishonest use of uh, computer, then uh, the exemptions extended here will not be useful at all. I do not know whether you have discussed with the police concerning the enforcement of 118, section 118 here. Well, there had been double prosecutions for the same offence, and it had been said that whichever is easier for prosecution, the uh, law will be used. I would like to know of Mr. Chang's response to that. What Deputy Secretary, thank you, Mr. Chen. Uh, the Enforcement Agency uh, for Copyright is the Customs and Excise. Mr. Chen referred to the provision on dishonest use of the computer. Uh, the uh, Customs and Excise Department is not the law enforcement agency. In 1993, uh, when the provision on uh, dishonest use of the computer was uh, endorsed by the Council, the Secretary for Security said categorically that uh, the provision would not be invoked for uh, tackling infringing acts or infringing offences, and that was clearly uh, put on the handset of the Council. So we will not uh, invoke that provision for tackling infringement offences. Mr. Sin Chong Kai, I do understand that there was a discussion under Clause 28A. But for 8D here, is my understanding correct? You know, uh, people have uh, uh, black boxes. And it may be able to provide infringing acts. I don't know whether I should call them uh, movies or what, uh, once it is connected to the Internet. So uh, the such boxes uh, may uh, be sold, and under 8D, a person will not be prosecuted. Is that right? No, rather, uh, this one is an offence, defence. Now, the focus is communications right. If uh, people use the Internet for communicating infringing works, then um, it can be a civil or or criminal offence. Whether it is by means of a box or uh, the computer, so long as there is a server in Hong Kong containing the infringement material for streaming to your computer at home, then once the bill is enacted, then uh, the provider has breached the relevant offences and will be held criminally liable. And that is the spirit of the amendment bill. If the server is not in Hong Kong, then uh, it is not within our jurisdiction. But the offence of uh, communications uh, still exists. This is exactly where the loophole lies. If a person wants to uh, commit an 
infringing act, of course, uh, he will not put the server in Hong Kong. And uh, he is selling uh, such boxes in Hong Kong for connecting to the server. So 8B says that uh, in the process, uh, he gains financial uh, interest. Can you invoke 8D here to charge that person? Uh, will you amend the law to stop such infringing acts? Thank you. Yes, uh, the law uh, targets at such infringement, infringing acts, including uh, by means of the internet. It's true that a TV station has written to us as well as to LegCo to uh, draw attention to that uh, problem. We are now studying the um, submission and we will provide a written reply later and we explain uh, whether uh, the spill uh, is useful or not useful in tackling that situation. When it comes to pursuing liability, there must be a very clear concept using the uh, an electronic means to uh, transmit copyright works to the public is just like um, an infringement done in printing. So we will provide a reply later. I don't know whether this is clear enough or not. Communicating the work to the public for the purpose of or in the course of any trade or business that consists of communicating works to the public for profit or reward, will the person who sells such boxes uh, be regarded as uh, in the course of uh, business? No. We have to tell. In a server, there are infringing works. And who communicates such works to users? then the person is liable, whether it is by means of a box or not. Uh, on the internet, you can see uh, such servers doing this. So we target at the one who communicates the works. It's just like uh, the um, infringement of printed copyright works. Uh, we catch the person. And uh, for this, uh, we have the same threshold. I hope my understanding is correct. I've asked you a number of times. That means 8B cannot be used to target someone selling uh, such boxes in Hong Kong. Those boxes can assist users to have access or to view infringing materials. Well, we will not say categorically whether it is yes or no. It depends on the technology behind the box. And uh, we have uh, to uh, clarify the what's happening before we can give you a comprehensive reply. Because uh, when there was uh, the uh, World Cup, the uh, Customs and Excise did uh, take enforcement action against a certain set of boxes. So we have uh, to uh, look at the case uh, itself before we can give you a categoric reply. Mr. Sin Chong Kai, well, I, I have uh, put my question to you very clearly. There is no need for you uh, to be evasive. I'm asking whether the amendment under 8B is an effective provision to crack down on set-up boxes. We, we will. We will give you a written reply afterwards. You will. But you can, of course, say that uh, you have no intention to uh, tackle set-up boxes. But this is already a very obvious trend. And the question is whether you're going to tackle that because uh, you have uh, this communications right. Yes, we do know that the situation is getting more and more serious in recent years. In our liaison with copyright owners and according to uh, enforcement patrols by the Customs and Excise, we are aware of this. And 
if it is a form of streaming, yes, it is an infringement rights, and we should tackle that. It is important that we establish communication rights and the bill under Section 28, and uh, we also have a sanctions. When it comes to uh, individual cases uh, regarding set up boxes, uh, please uh, wait for a comprehensive reply. I ask you one last time. Uh, for instance, uh, 3A, Section 3A of the ordinance, you haven't amended it. Since the trend is already here, 3A bracket 4, anyone who produces or um, imports anything into Hong Kong. Now, nothing is uh, being imported into Hong Kong. We we'll talk about setup box. There is nothing in the setup box, but it can help you to have access to infringing materials. So I'd like to know whether you're going to uh, widen the scope of 8B to tackle those who sell such setup boxes. The question has already been asked, and I think you should consider at this stage whether you should tackle this or not, and whether amendments should be made. Yes, 3AB uh, is. Uh, also part of our consideration, we will uh, view it as a whole. Mr. Mock, yes, I'd like to follow up on uh, Mr. Sin Chong Kai's question. It is also a very complicated and difficult issue. These set-up boxes are just a computer for designated uh, purpose, if I may say so. We may be aware of possible infringing acts, but we have to stick to the position of uh, being technology neutral. We should not lightly, uh, too hastily come to the conclusion that such boxes are for sure for certain purposes and be banned. I know that in the copyright ordinance, uh, on uh, with a technological circumvention. However, uh, the uh, website itself is legal. Unfortunately, it is not in Hong Kong, so we do not have jurisdiction over it. So if you ban the hardware, you tackle the problem uh, at the hardware, it may not necessarily be a good precedent. It will have profound implications. And what I don't like even more is blocking some sites uh, but uh, again, uh, this decision uh, will have uh, far-reaching implications on uh, internet, uh, uh, say, um, uh, freedom and also uh, maintaining uh, an open uh, cyberspace. So we have to be cautious. Uh, please do not just arrest somebody if he's selling set-up boxes, because very soon you may have to ban um, mobile phones as well, because any computer or even a mobile phone can do that. So uh, set-up boxes, uh, if you say that they can facilitate access to uh, infringing works and you ban them, it is not a good precedent. I do understand that uh, infringement, infringing acts are, be, uh, are happening, but uh, this may not be the best approach. Mr. Chen Chi Chun, my question is still relates to dishonest use of the computer. And Mr. Wong said that uh, when the provision was enacted, it was said that uh, the provision would not be used to tackle uh, copyright offences. I like to ask uh, whether there is some um, any uh, documents to uh, substantiate that. Because for Section One Six One, it was used uh, for uh, tackling um, hacking and other things. But then I it was once used for prosecuting um, illegally uh, or taking indecent photos of victims. So uh, please uh, show us the documents, of course, how the provision uh, should be invoked is beyond our control. And Section 161, I'd like to know uh, whether there are just a few um, um, 
criminal uh, conditions. Mr. Wong, we do um, understand Mr. Chen's concern. We will provide the paper for the BC later. In fact, uh, it can be found in handset uh, for page 2933. That's the meeting, uh, uh, the council sitting uh, in April. Yes, uh, that was in 1993 before the handover. Uh, option one, exemption uh, for, from a uh, criminal offence. Indeed, we've considered how uh, exemptions can be granted in the um, criminal in criminal liability. We believe by fair dealing, we should be able to give sufficient exemptions. If we just invoke fair dealing, it will be the best approach. There is no need to make a distinction between civil and uh, criminal liability. That is our recommendation to part of our um, list of recommendations to the Council after the public consultation. Last September, when we started the scrutiny of the bill, uh, we prepared a paper on uh, uh, criminal uh, liability of uh, the criminal liability aspects of the bill to the Council. All right, if uh, there are no further questions, please go on. 119. And this is the penalties for offences under Section 118. Very simple. That is to add a new uh, bracket 3. A person who commits an offence under Section 1188B is liable on conviction on indictment to a fine at level 5 in respect of each copyright work and to imprisonment for four years. And the fine is $50,000. No question. Section 121 concerning the affidavit evidence. 121 bracket 2C. After that section, add 2CA. For the purposes of any proceedings instituted under Section 1188B, an affidavit that purports to have been made by or on behalf of the copyright owner of a copyright work in which A states the name of the copyright owner and B states that the person named in the affidavit does not have the license of the copyright owner to do an act referred to in Section 118. 8b in respect of the work is subject to the conditions contained in subsection bracket 4 to be admitted without further proof in the proceedings. And after that, sections 1 to 1 bracket 3 after 2c add 2ca. So mainly it is for cross-reference uh, additions, that is to add to CA. Basically, this is concerning the affidavit evidence. No questions, colleagues? 154. Section 154. Amended licensing schemes to which sections 155 to 160 apply, and these are again wording amendments only. Section 154, repeal paragraph D and substitute with communicating the work to the public. Section 154E, repeal or making available, and this is because of the right for um, communicating. Uh, the work to the public, and the amendment is over that. Section 161, amended licenses to which sections 162 to 166 apply. Again, similar uh, substitutions, that is repeal paragraph D, substitute communicating the work to the public in section 161, and for section 161E, repeal all making available, and uh, this is it for 
the amendments for this section. New question, section 199. It amends the index of, ref of defined expressions, section 199, English text, table, repeal librarian in sections 45 to 52 and substitute librarian in sections 46 to 53. And for section 199, the table, repeal, make available copies to the public, the original section 26. And for section 199, table, repeal, specified library or archive in sections 46 to 52 and substitute that with specified library, museum or archive in sections 46 to 53. And lastly, section 199, table, add in alphabetical order communication to the public in that section 28A2, curator in sections 46 to 53, sections 46 bracket 5, make available to the public, and um, sections 28A3. All these amendments are because of the previous amendments and therefore in the um, content page here, the, at the table, we will make such relevant amendments as well. Yes. Section 200 amended rights conferred on performers and persons having fixation rights. Fixation rights. Section 202, definition of fixation, repeal paragraph 2, substitute made from a communication to the public, including the performance. Questions, members? No? None. We go on to section 202. Now, for this part, it is all about the performer's rights, and they are similar to the copyrights that we, amendments that we have talked about. Uh, section 202. One, repeal paragraph B, substitute with communicates to the public uh, live the whole or any substantial part of a qualifying performance or and section 2021 repeal paragraph C and substitute with makes a fixation of the whole or any substantial part of a qualifying performance directly from a communication to the public which includes an unfixed performance and lastly section 202 repeal subsection bracket 4. Members? Questions? None? Section 203, it amends consent required for copying or fixation. Section 203, bracket 3, after electronic means add, comma, and making a copy that is transient or is incidental to some other use of the fixation. Um, Chen Chi Chan, can you talk about transient, making a copy that is transient? Well, if I remember correctly, in uh, 76A, section 76A, section 65A concerning temporary reproduction, transient means non permanent for a finite period of time. But the law is silent as to what constitutes transient, but it is definitely not permanent or for a long period. So this is to facilitate the mentioning of transient copies. Mr. Chairman, is this equivalent to the uh, cash records? Yes, you understand what I'm referring to, is that right? Well, this is a technical issue, basically. Some of the computers, you do not have to retrieve from the uh, hard disk or from a very far off uh, server, but rather w uh, within the a shorter distance, there will be such storage so that there will be frequent downloading of such information. This is what I understand as to the reason for exemption under copyrights law. 
and uh, this is the main reason. I do not know whether this helps Mr. Chen Chen in understanding the transient copy concept. Well, and what about incidental, Mr. Chair? What is incidental? Uh, that is to say, it is not the material in principle. Incidental inclusion, as in Section 42, a photo, for instance, is mainly capturing a person or a building, but on the other hand, uh, a person may be standing in front of a building, and the building is also captured in the image of the photo. Uh, that would be incidental. So the main purpose is not to record a certain material. Let's say a video made at home uh, also had caught the image of a television set in the uh, household, and that would be incidental. Section 205 amended consent required for making available of copies to public, and in the heading repeal copies and substitute with fixations. Section 205, one repeal copies of, and 205, two repeal the making available to the public of copies of a fixation of a performance, substituted with making a fixation of performance available to the public. Section 205, two repeal the making available of copies of the fixation and substitute with making the fixation available. 2052 repeal the making available of copies of works through the service commonly known as the Internet and substitute with by making fixations available through the Internet. Section 205 repeal subsection bracket 3 and section 205 repeal subsection 4 and substitute with the mere provision of facilities by any person for enabling or facilitating the making available of fixations to the public does not of itself constitute an act of making the fixations available to the public. And Section 2055, repeal copies of. All these amendments are similar to copyright amendments that we have looked at before. So basically it is repealing copies of because the this is not the only uh, situation that we refer to when we talk about um, uh, making available to the public. Section 206 amended infringement of performance rights by use of fixation made without consent. Section 206.1b repeal broadcast includes in the cable program service and substituted with communicates to the public and to section 206 repeal subsection bracket. <clears throat> and this is also because of the uh, right for communication and therefore these relevant amendments. Mr. Chen Chi Chen, uh, again the question on copy, making copies and fixation. Now you say repealing of copies is because of uh, hard where or software copies, uh, the copies itself is no longer important, but the uh, the but the fixation would itself have a hard disk or a hardware or software, isn't it so? Well, actually, it is really about performance and performers uh, copies of a fixation is a kind of copy but it doesn't specify that it has to be a copy of a performance or a concert, let's say. Uh, the fixation of a concert and you making a, a image of it is not equivalent to a copy. So this is referring to the rights of the performers. The fixation rights should also belong to the performer himself or herself. So in Chinese, you do not need the character bun because there may not be a bun, an item as such, because bun seem to connotate an item, a physical item, and there may not be a physical item. A copy may be made, and it can be streamed right away to other people. 
Yes, the act of uh, making a copy or fixation. That is the difference. Xin Chong Kai? Well, actually, we know that it is prevalent, whether it is a movie or a performance, even before that it is concluded. It is already uh, made available on YouTube or other social media. That is to say, you may be watching the show as you see it available on YouTube or the Internet. I do not know how whether this is uh, there is any efficacy in this enshrinement. Ms. Chong, well, yes, where there is no uh, consent of the performer uh, for this kind of action, indeed it is an infringement. I do not know whether these people know about it, but of course if the, the, the person who does carries out this act has asked for permission, of course this is not an infringement. Well, Mr. Chair, I do not know whether there had been cases brought to court over such actions, uh, but if there were, then the performer himself or herself will have to first uh, hold on. Is this criminal or is it civil? Civil. This is basically for copyrights. That is, the copyrights belong to the performer, and where there are such fixations made, then the uh, consent of the performer should be obtained. Mr. Mock? Yes, this really frequently uh, occurs, I agree, but uh, the law will have to have a set a baseline um, for such actions. Uh, th this, there will be civil recourse, but I would think the copyright owners would want to, as soon as possible, delete such information or material. And not everything can be dealt with by the law, but rather in actual practice and operation for the major platforms such as YouTube that was mentioned just now, whether there be automatic mechanisms or there may be certain agreements reached with the copyright owners, then in a very short time the, this kind of material can be taken off. I think our indicator is not about the efficacy indicator is not about whether there had been court cases or people brought to court for taking this kind of action. But really, we are affording a kind of protection because at the end of the day, really in practice, uh, this will be too late. Resorting to the law would be too late. Uh, in fact, it will be dealt with uh, in other ways and more in a more timely manner. Is that your understanding as well? Well, thank you, Mr. Sin, for the uh, opinion. Yes, that is the spirit. Uh, the copyright law does specify black and white what is infringement, what is not. But for actual application, it is not as strict as the law itself. For copyright, uh, it is very important for the copyright owner to give consent, whether there is consent given or not, as some copyright owners actually welcome the materials uh, be put onto the Internet for broadcast. And the Internet does provide a faster mechanism where the law or the court will not be, uh, need not be resorted to for protection. And that is why the different stake owners are all protected. The owner of the copyright, uh, the intermediary, when they can resort to safe harboring to delete certain materials, and the user as well. So it's take, this law is taking care of all these different parties' interests. Um, Ms. Mo, 2061. Uh, the Chinese uh, reads, uh, or rather, uh, with the consent of, uh, without the uh, performer's consent. Um, because uh, in our uh, Chinese, it talks about a uh, qualified uh, performers. So, but in English, uh, I, we do not see this 
you it just reads uh, the performance consent. There is no mention of a qualified performance consent. Why is there such a difference between the two texts, Ms. Strong? Uh, the in B, we are talking about a qualifying performance. So, in uh, the uh, in Chinese, uh, they have put "合资格 uh, in qualifying performance before the uh, performer. So, uh, the Chinese uh, reads. It means a qualifying performance. According uh, to uh, my memory, uh, there is a definition for qualifying performance under 201. Rights of performance. Uh, I think you do have that in your markup copy since uh, there is no amendment to that. There is a definition for a qualifying performance in the ordinance. Uh, in relation to the rights of performance, uh, performance that is staged by someone who um, is resident of Hong Kong or someone who is not resident of Hong Kong but done in Hong Kong. So this is about uh, the uh, main place of residence of the performer. Because uh, copyright protection is territorial, so uh, we are given a wider scope of protection. That means a perform a performer from any part of the world will uh, be protected. Can our legal advisor please help? Because uh, in the English uh, text 2061, it begins with a performer's rights, and it is only in B that we see the term qualifying performance. For instance, the Chinese text, uh, the Chinese term meaning qualifying performance, is put in subsection 1. Is there any uh, legal implications here? I was thinking that uh, the uh, two texts uh, should be uh, really uh, symmetrical. Uh, we can follow up with the administration later. Whether uh, we are talking about a qualified performer or a qualifying performance, I, I will uh, work it out with the administration after the meeting. I'll follow up with the administration afterwards. Okay. Any other questions? I'm sorry, I uh, was otherwise engaged. Does somebody mention the following? 2061B. Uh, that person knows or has reason to believe. I know that these are legal terms, but uh, has reason to believe. If I just say that, well, uh, at that time, I, I believe, or I had reason to believe. H how is uh, this uh, construed in the context? Well, this is a legal term. Has reason to believe means that there are objective facts to support his belief. So uh, this is something objective. If the person made a fixation without the person's concern. Now, if uh, he has uh, received consent from the performance, then he has not breached anything. So this is an offense if, uh, I mean, this is a defense. If the defendant has objective facts to uh, cause him to believe, then it's a defense. And why is uh, 206 
subsection 2 crossed out entirely. Uh, subsection 2 reads, a performance rights are also infringed by a person who without the performer's consent shows or plays the whole or any substantial part of a qualifying performance in the course of making available to the public a fixation uh, which was and which the person knows or has reason to believe was made without the performer's consent. Because in A, we already said shows or plays in public the whole or any substantial part of a qualifying performance, and B, communicates to the public the whole or any substantial part of a qualifying performance. Uh, these two taken together has included everything in subsection 2 and therefore uh, subsection 2 can be crossed out. I'm still, I'm still a bit baffled. I've got friends sending me a hyperlinks on say uh, parts of a concert uh, by uh, Leslie Jung, Anita Mui, and a variety shows uh, staged by TVB. I am very happy uh, seeing those clips. You may say that the one uh, watching such links may not have committed an offence, but on YouTube so you can see lots of such video clips. I'd like to know uh, what will happen to such clips on the YouTube in the future. Now, we cannot rule out that some of the clips on shown on the YouTube has got the consent or authorization of uh, copyright owners. And we understand that they have a content ID and the owner can uh, register with YouTube that these are my contents, I allow people to use it, to use them, and uh, there may be advertisement uh, revenue generated in the process, and, and this will be split with the owner. This is already a commercial operation of YouTube, and this explains why you can uh, have access to such clips. And YouTube may have already sought permission from uh, ID uh, Society, and uh, for some reasons, they allowed uh, to use uh, copyright works. So such acts would not uh, be affected by the amendment bill at all. But consumers, well, I we're not really uh, consumers, but users. I don't know when I'm watching an infringement work or, or a genuine copyright work. Of course, I know you won't come and arrest me, but if unknowingly I am infringing uh, the rights of somebody else, I should not uh, enjoy the uh, video clip at all and I shouldn't share it. Yes, of course, you can may set a good example for your friends and ask people not to uh, view such clips. but. I think the spirit of our regulation uh, is to uh, tackle uh, the um, yeah. If we uh, have to target the viewers too, then uh, the scope may be too wide. Uh, but anyway, you may set a good example. Now, I've got a video clip of Anita Moy. I really in, indulge in it. I don't know how many times I viewed it over the weekend. I have saved it. I don't know um, whether it is there is no idea. I don't know whether it is an infringing uh, work or gen copyright work. Now, you said that on YouTube there may be commercial agreements for uh, revenue splitting. Am I allowed to save the clip? Because uh, if you say that uh, it is an infringement, I will delete it at once. 
even if uh, the amendment bill uh, is passed, uh, viewing it alone uh, without duplication of reproduction is not an infringing act. But if you save it, uh, there are existing provisions you might have uh, uh, you might have uh, committed a civil uh, offence, and that authorization is given to YouTube and not for you to reproduce the clip. So if I delete it at once, I'm safe, right? Uh, let's say you just uh, view it and do not reproduce it. Okay. I think we have already uh, discussed this in the past, and please don't repeat it anymore. Mr. Xin Chung Kai, you have a question? Mr. Chen Chi Chun? Uh, Ms. Claudia Mo uh, talked about a certain example for other people. We don't know because sometimes uh, the whole movie uh, could be uh, available on YouTube permanently. Uh, there, there, re there is reason to believe that the copyright owner allowed it for publicity. I don't know whether the owner uh, wants me to share it to publicize his work or not. Um. I would want to go back to the um, copy or fixation issue. Now, very often nowadays we can actually uh, provide a link on FaceTime, for instance, uh, or other social media in recording a live performance, let's say a song being sung something like that, and send it out to other people, let's say the public, or there, can, uh, there may be a link I may available for people to click on. And that is already an infringement of copyright. Now, when you say any copy, well, there is no copy, or there you will not be able to find on my uh, mobile phone uh, from which I took the image, uh, the performance of the song itself. You can find, cannot find such material in the mo mobile phone. What then? Uh, there, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, so you're saying that you are uh, taking that image down without making a pop copy. That is right. Right away, stream it. Well, streaming is already electronic broadcast, isn't it? But here you're talking about copies. Well, there is no copy made. But uh, there are specific uh, s uh, s um, sections uh, on specific situation. The situation that you described is dealt with by Section 28. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Sin, well, over 10 years ago, I think it was a copyrights law being amended. At the time, we were talking about taking video recorders into movie houses or cinemas uh, to record the film. And even before uh, the film was taken off the screens, uh, the recordings were made available for sale in the streets. Now, there were these things back then. Now, right now, nowadays, people, everybody, use the mobile phone to uh, make recordings. And wouldn't this be a criminal offense or civil offense? Well, Mr. Chairman, selling such uh, images or copies or recordings would, of course, be uh, criminal. But where we are talking about civil events here with the performer's uh, consent, that is separate. And where there is sale of the recordings, as you mentioned, there would be criminal offense. So, Mr. Chair, are we saying that uh, for a, a person or a member of an audience capturing the concert or an image, uh, that would be civil. Uh, there would be a civil liability, is that right? Not criminal. Mr. Chair, 
criminal would be the situation where there is trade or transactions for commercial benefits. All right, colleagues, we will close the meeting after two more sections. Yes, 207A. That is infringement of performance rights by renting copies to the public without consent. consent. 207A to B Roman numeral 1, repeal, comma, broadcasting or inclusion in the cable program servants and substitute with all communicating to the public. So this is about uh, communicating to the public and therefore repealing broadcasting, as we have seen before. Section 210 amended infringement of fixation rights by use of fixation made without consent. Section 2101B repeal broadcasts or includes in a cable program service and substitute with communicates to the public. Section 210, repeal subsection 2, and section 210, 3, repeal or 2. Now, this is because of um, the right to communicate to the public and therefore these amendments. Two one oh two, you're taking the entire section out. Why? Miss Chong? Well that's the same reason uh, as we have done before. Well, uh Mr Chair, this is because of communication to the public uh, because of that right. In two ten one A it already says um The broadcast includes in the cable program service, and therefore, because communicating to the public already includes uh, such broadcasts, and therefore we can repeal uh, broadcasts or includes in a cable program service. These are technical. 214, bracket 3, repeal broadcast included in a cable program service or made available to the public and substitute with or communicated to the public. Again, this is a technical um, amendment. No questions? We now go to Section 221. Section 221 amended provisions as to damages in infringement action. Section 2212B, repeal and, the word, and section 2212C, repeal the word records and substitute with records uh, with a semicolon. After section 2212C, add D any unreasonable conduct of the defendant after the act constituting the infringement occurred, including any act done or attempt made by the defendant to destroy, conceal, or disguise evidence of the infringement after having been informed of the infringement by the plaintiff, and e the likelihood of widespread circulation of infringing copies as a result of the infringement. And this is about uh, other uh, harms. I'm surprised about D, Ms. Mo, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm surprised about D, adding D. Now, if the uh, person uh, was acted out of ignorance, or naivety, and he very quickly deleted the material. But it says, in, it seems to say that uh, the defendant, in destroying, concealing, or disguising evidence of the infringement after having been informed of the infringement by the plaintiff, um, 
he seems to be even more liable in a sense. And uh, because of the quick deletion of such materials, because of 221-2D, uh, uh, the person is even uh, more to blame. Why so? Well, in answer to that question, it is about unreasonable conduct, as pointed out here. The owner of the materials or the copyright would inform the infringer. And if the infringer right away stops the act of infringement, it would not come to this uh, section. That is, in very extreme situations where there is infringement and the actions are taken to destroy, conceal, or disguise evidence of the infringement. Um, that we're referring to that kind of situation here. It's not those who very quickly take off the materials of infringement. Not the case that you're referring to. Section 229 amended meaning of infringing fixation. 2292 repeal private purposes and substitute it with private and domestic use. Section 2293 repeal private purposes, also substitute with private and domestic use. After Section 2293, add a 3 capital A if a fixation lawfully made for private and domestic use under this part is used for any other purpose, the fixation is to be treated as an infringing fixation. And then after section 2297D, add the small letter A, section 245, capital A, bracket 4, fixations made by education establishments for educational purposes. So simply put, as in uh, copyright law, this is for media exchange and also for private and domestic use. Mr. Sin. Um, Mr. Chair, I can understand private use. Private and domestic use, I seem to understand both, but I do not know the difference between the two. If I do not see the difference between the two, why amend it this way? Well, for pri Ms. Chair, for private purpose, it may be the individual without anything to do with the uh, domestic household. For the UK, for instance, where a person has, let's say, bought a CD, the person uses it for private purpose, let's say, on its uh, mobile phone or a uh, listening uh, machine, whereas domestic use is sharing with uh, family or household. Well, if it's outside of the household, then this is not the sharing is not permitted. That is the private personal and for domestic consumption only. So you can go to his house to watch the the infringed material. No, you cannot. But we've we've talked about this before as well, Miss Claudia Mo. Well, this kind of law, of course. Uh, is of course uh, has very good intentions. We have indeed talked about this as well before, and this is about uh, the well. But on the other hand, myself, I would have the same question as well. This is overdoing it. Private and domestic use. What if, what if I lend it to you, the materials to you? Technically, it is an infringement, but you cannot enforce it. I have a film or a soundtrack or, or a sound record that I have bought, and I want to lend it to Chen Chi Chun. What do you do? You know, uh, set off the Interpol after me? I mean, this is so unrealistic. Or are you saying this? we're just copying from international experience? In protecting 
copyright, Mr. Chair, there are certain codes or certain principles we have to abide by. Internationally, for copyright exemption, there is this reasonable test and in uh, for certain conditions only. And here, if a person privately owns a original soundtrack or a CD, we are already extending it further for the scope than the UK. The UK is only for private purpose only, and here we're extending it to domestic use. Now, this one person has bought the CD, and this person, if he lends it to another person for use, then in fact there is an infringement, but there will have to be a balance and therefore the substitution. Mr. Chair, then do you agree, the, does the administration agree that, uh, let's say, Mr. Sin ha lends the CD to uh, Mr. Mock for Mr. Mock's consumption at his own house? Uh, is that an infringement? You said it is an infringement, but is it enforceable? But of course, if the CD is an original, then the, it can be lent to another person. But if this is a fixation or a copy, that is, you retain the original uh, copy or the original and you um, lend the copy out to another person, then that is an infringement. Let us conclude the discussion here. Our next meeting is uh, the 7th of May, 8.30 in the morning. We end the meeting here. Thank you.